In a travel agency, there are procedures that require various tasks to be done one after the other in a certain order. For example, when someone wants to make a reservation for a package tour to a certain attraction. When the reservation is requested, it must be verified whether the person requesting the package is a client of the agency. And in the case that the person is not, they must be registered as a client. Once this step is completed, it's necessary to verify that there are packages available for the number of persons that wish to make the trip. If there are spaces available, the reservation will be assigned, and if the case is otherwise, the passenger must be offered a different package. A sequence of steps such as those that we have just seen is called the business process. In Genexus, we can define business processes such as this. Let's do it! Since we need to register the reservations for package tours, what we did previously was to create a reservation transaction with attributes to store the identifier, date of reservation, number of persons using the package, identifier, and name of the client and reservation available to check whether the package tour is available or not. For the customer ID attribute, we select the nullable column with the yes value to indicate that at the moment of entering reservation, we might still not have the client identifier of the person requesting the reservation. Now we will create a type of diagram of business processes object. We go to File, New, and we choose a business process diagram object. We call it Attraction Reservation. We go to a blank page of the diagram that we are going to make. If we open the toolbox, we see that there are many symbols that we can use. To mark the beginning of our business process, we drag a None Start Event symbol. Since the first activity that we are going to carry out is to enter a reservation, we locate the reservation transaction in the Folder View window and drag it to the diagram. We see that a green rectangle with the name Reservation has been created and that it has a human figure in the upper left corner. This tells us that an interactive activity has been created, as the transaction allows the user to enter data through the same. To connect the Start node to the transaction, we click on the lower part of the green circle and drag it until the point of the arrow touches the upper edge of the transaction rectangle. According to the process followed by travel agencies, the system must control whether the person making the reservation is already a client or not. To represent a decision in the diagram, we go to the toolbar, click on Gateways, drag an exclusive gateway node across the diagram, and add it to the reservation transaction. This type of node evaluates a condition and, depending on the result, makes the flow go downwards which would be the normal course, or to the right of the symbol, which would be the alternative course. In our example, we must define the gateway condition that makes the flow take the normal course or the alternative flow to add a client. That is to say, if the person wishing to book a package tour is not a client of the business, the customer transaction is used to add them as a client. To begin, we drag the customer transaction to the diagram and we connect it in the exclusive gateway node. To complete the decision definition, we have to add the condition that, starting from the decision node, will make the process flow go towards the right, bringing up the customer transaction, or flow downwards to the next task. In our case, the path towards the right would be the alternative flow while going downwards would be the routine flow for when the person requesting the reservation is already a customer of the agency. To define the condition that causes the branching, we double-click on the green arrow that joins Gateway with the customer transaction, and we see the condition editor window open up. We type in reservation dot customer ID equals zero to indicate that the flow should take this path if the customer ID attribute shows a value of zero when entering the reservation. If it follows the alternative flow, 
the customer transaction will be opened to add the person requesting the reservation as a customer. Once we've confirmed the entry, we must assign the newly created customer to the reservation. For this, we have to create a procedure. We call it assign customer to reservation and in the rules section we type parm with the parameters ampersand reservation id and ampersand customer id these variables store the reservation identifier that we create at the beginning and the customer identifier that we want to assign to the reservation in the source we type for each where reservation id equals with the reservation ID variable that we get as a parameter. Then, we assign the value of the customer ID variable to customer ID and close the for each. In this way, we assign the newly created customer to the previously entered reservation. We save and return to the diagram. Now we drag the newly created procedure to the diagram. We see that we've created a blue rectangle, meaning that the task created is non-interactive, also known as a batch. This is because the procedure is executed without the intervention of a person. That is to say, there is no interaction with the user entering data like there is in the case of a transaction. Finally, we connect the assigned customer to reservation procedure from the customer transaction. Very good. Now we've explained the tasks that are carried out if the alternative flow is executed, adding new customers and assigning them to a reservation. Now we go to the activity that's performed if the flow is routine, when it's not necessary to use the customer transaction. At this point, the employee should verify the availability of the reservation, for example, checking available flights, if there are still spaces available in the package requested for the requested dates, and so on. And finally, also check in the system to see if the reservation can be made or not. To enter this data, we must have a display in which we can confirm or cancel the reservation. For this purpose, we can open the reservation transaction again and check whether the reservation is available or not by using the reservation available attribute. To do this, we locate the reservation transaction in the folder view window and drag it to the diagram, and then we connect it in the gateway. We see that an activity called Reservation1 has been created, so we press F2 and change the name to Reservation Availability. Notice that here we are not changing the name to the transaction, but to the diagram activity that brings up the reservation transaction. As we said before, when we insert the gateway that allows us to make a decision, the flow to the right towards the customer transaction is the alternate flow, and the downwards path is the normal flow for when the person requesting the reservation is already a client of the agency. To indicate that the downwards flow is the normal flow, we select the connection, and in the properties window, we put its condition type property in the default value. Note that in the diagram, the flow is indicated by a diagonal green line that crosses it. Now we connect the assigned customer to reservation task to the reservation availability task, being that once the customer assignment is completed, we must also continue with the verification of the reservation's availability. And now we continue with our diagram. Once the reservation availability task is completed, we have to evaluate the value that we put in reservation availability attribute. If the checkbox is left unmarked, it means that the reservation is not available and the client should be offered a different package. To show this, we insert an exclusive gateway from the toolbar and connect it to the reservation availability task. Next, we connect the alternate flow from the same 
which is drawn on the left, to the reservation task so that we can add a new reservation. All right, now we have to enter the condition necessary for the alternate flow for when the reservation is not available. To indicate this in the diagram, we double click on the connection that comes up on the left and type reservation available equals false. Okay, so now we've analyzed everything that happens in the case when we have to offer an alternate trip to the customer because the reservation cannot be confirmed. What we have to do now is consider the case when the reservation is confirmed. In this case, there will be no more tasks and the process should be finalized. To indicate that we want to finish the diagram, we insert a none end event symbol from the toolbar and connect it in the gateway. This downwards connection is the normal gateway flow, so when the reservation is confirmed, the process will be finalized. To indicate this, we select the connection and put its property condition type in the properties window in the default value. At this point, we've finalized our business process diagram. To check the functioning of the same, we will execute it. On the tab with the diagram's name, we hit the button on the right and choose Run. We see that we've opened up a display with GXflow customer, which looks like an email inbox. It shows the pending tasks for each user according to the defined process. If we look at this inbox, we see a closed envelope, and in the subject column it says Attraction Reservation, telling us that we have the process defined, and in the task column we have the reservation task pending. To execute it, we select the same and hit the Execute button, or double-click on the task. We see that the reservation transaction is opened, so we can enter the reservation. We leave the ID blank because it's self-numbered. Enter the date, put 2 for the quantity of passengers, and we leave customer ID at 0 because the person requesting the reservation is not already a client of the business. We press confirm, and we see that Genexus informs us that the data has been entered correctly. So we close the window using the X symbol. Now the task no longer has a closed envelope. The envelope is now open, with a symbol showing that the task has been executed. To go to the following task, we hit Send. Now the pending task to carry out is the customer transaction. Given that, since we did not enter the customer identifier in the reservation, the flow of the diagram will go to the right, opening the customer transaction so that we can add the person as a new client. We execute the task, the customer transaction display opens, and we enter the client. We confirm, and then we close the window. Now we hit the send button to complete the task and execute the following. We see that our next task is called reservation availability. If we remember the process, the customer task brought up a task called assign customer to reservation which brings up a procedure for assigning the newly entered customer's identifier to the reservation. As the Assign Customer to Reservation task is not interactive, it is not presented to us in the inbox when we finish the customer task. Instead, it shows us the next task that we have to deal with, which is Reservation Availability. Now we return to the GX Flow window and execute the Reservation Availability task, doing a double click on the same. Now the reservation transaction form opens, so we can enter whether the reservation is available or not. Let's suppose that it is, and we mark the checkbox and hit confirm. We see that the data has been entered correctly, so we close the transaction window and hit send to finalize the task. Now the inbox is empty. 
This means that there are no more pending tasks and we have arrived at the end of the process. We can see that if we had marked the checkbox, the workflow would have again taken us to the reservation transaction at the beginning of the diagram. Something that we haven't yet mentioned is that all of these tasks were executed by the same user. This is how it is while we develop and test the process, but in real use, there would be different users executing the different tasks according to the profiles that the organization has. Another interesting thing to note is that we can see the history of the process. We can see the paths the diagram took when the process was executed. To see the history, we select My Processes in the Navigator window. We can see the process that we've just executed, Attraction Reservation, in its completed form. We double-click on the same, and we see a window open up which shows us the history of the process. In this window, we can see all the tasks that were executed. If we go to More Actions, View Diagram, we can see the history in animated form. We hit play, In this way, we see that Genexus allows us to model business processes in an intuitive way, automatically resolving which objects should be executed in each case in accordance with the definition that we make through the diagram. To learn more about this topic, visit the site at the address shown on the display.